The digestive system consists of the gastrointestinal tract, or alimentary canal, and accessory digestive organs. Food enters the tract at the mouth and is processed by the organs. The contents that leave the system at the end of the tract are primarily undigested food. Your goals for learning are to identify the organs and sphincters of the gastrointestinal tract, to describe the structure of the wall of the gastrointestinal tract, to identify the accessory organs of the digestive system, to state a simplified function for each organ. Here's what you need to know, that mucous membranes line body cavities that are open to the outside, the histological makeup of mucous membranes, the types of epithelial tissues and their functions. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. The histological organization of the four-layered wall in the GI tract is similar from the stomach to the last portion of the anal canal. Throughout the tract, modifications of the histological organization serve regional functions. Click the small intestine to begin. We will illustrate the histological organization using the wall of the small intestine. The villi, microvilli, and intestinal crypts are specific modifications of the small intestine. We will describe other regional modifications as we move through the tract. Click the mucosa to begin. An epithelium, made up of columnar cells, forms the inner or luminal boundary of the tract. The lamina propria, a connective tissue layer, underlies the epithelium and carries blood and lymph vessels. A thin sheet of smooth muscle, the muscularis mucosi, forms the deep boundary of this layer. Click the epithelium. Functions of the GI epithelium include secretion of substances used in digestion, absorption of the digested products. Click a goblet cell. Goblet cells secrete mucus. Other epithelial cells secrete fluids, such as acid in the stomach and water and salts in the small intestine. Secretory products are released into the lumen. Click an enteroendocrine cell. The hormones of the GI system are produced and secreted by individual mucosal cells called enteroendocrine cells. They are present over a large area. Stimuli for release are in the lumen or near the basal surface of the cells. Note that hormones are released into the interstitial fluid to enter capillaries of the lamina propria. Hormones are not released into the lumen of the GI tract. Click a columnar epithelial cell. Nutrients are absorbed across a single layer of cells into blood capillaries or lymph vessels called lacteals. As we leave the mucosa, note that there are stem cells present throughout the GI tract that divide continuously to replace epithelial cells that are regularly shed. A new epithelium is produced every three to six days. Click the muscularis mucosi. This thin muscle, with inner circular fibers and outer longitudinal fibers, moves the mucosa. These movements alter mucosal folds and move the villi to aid digestion and absorption. Click the submucosa. The submucosa is loose connective tissue that carries blood and lymph vessels. At its deep boundary lies a network of intrinsic neurons called the submucosal plexus that serves the digestive system. The gastrointestinal tract is a muscular tube that begins at the mouth, or the oral cavity, and ends at the anus. 
Accessory organs include the teeth, tongue, gallbladder, and digestive glands. Click the mouth to reveal its functions. Food enters the GI tract at the mouth. Mechanical action of the teeth and tongue break food apart and mix it with saliva. A chewed portion of food, called a bolus, is separated and swallowed. Click the enlarged mouth to observe its unique anatomical features. The epithelium lining the mouth and pharynx is stratified squamous. It provides protection against abrasion in high temperatures. The epithelium covering the hard palate and dorsal surface of the tongue is keratinized. Click the esophagus to reveal its functions. The esophagus has no digestive or absorptive functions. It is simply a conduit that conveys food from the pharynx to the stomach. The esophagus passes through the diaphragm at the esophageal hiatus. Click the enlarged esophagus to observe its unique anatomical features. The upper third of the esophagus is striated muscle. The middle third is a mixture of striated and smooth muscle, and the lower third is smooth muscle. Like the mouth and pharynx, the lining is stratified squamous epithelium. Click the stomach to reveal its functions. The stomach expands to store ingested food. Its movements pulverize lumps and mix stomach secretions with the food. Acidic gastric juice digests cells, tissues, and some macromolecules. Partially digested food is called chyme. Click the enlarged stomach to observe its unique anatomical features. The stomach has four regions, the cardia, fundus, body, and pyloric region. The antrum is the largest part of the pyloric region, and the pylorus is the constricted terminal portion. Click the external surface of the stomach to see the interior structures. The empty stomach is flat, with a volume of about 50 milliliters. Its interior is thrown into folds called rugi. The rugi flatten out as the fundus and body distend to accommodate a meal. The stomach can hold about one liter of food with little change in internal pressure. Pressure rises as the stomach distends further to accommodate up to four liters of food. Click the stomach to see its muscular wall. In addition to the circular and longitudinal muscle layers of the GI tract, the stomach has an inner oblique layer. Muscles are thin in the fundus and body and produce only weak contractions. Gastric muscles increase in thickness in the pyloric region. Strong contractions in the pyloric region are important for mixing ingested food with gastric juice and emptying chyme into the small intestine.